This is awesome. Yeah. This is amazing. How stable is this? It is so stable. I couldn't believe how stable it was. I was right on the edge, and it was just totally, it was totally fine. It was totally flat. That's it amazing. Was amazing. Stability was always my major concern, so I made that my primary focus when I was designing this product. We have this gradient inner hull here, and it's something I call gradient buoyancy. It's a lot of resistance and a lot of bounce back. Right now, as I'm shifting this way, the boat's bouncing right back up. I can walk around the deck all I want, I can shift my weight, it feels really nice. Now what that does is it gives the craft as a whole a lower center of gravity. And that's great, but it's really what it can do to your feet that makes a huge difference in your total experience on the craft. This smaller deck makes a great template for your feet. It's always going to make sure that they're within an equal radius of the center point of the craft. Now eventually one leg when you're standing is going to want to go further beyond this perimeter. And when that happens, this was a larger flatter deck, well then what would happen is the boat is going to pitch and tilt towards the direction of that outer leg. And it's then up to you put your weight on the inside leg and control your own equilibrium. But in this boat, when I press my weight forward into that outer leg, it's directing that weight and that pressure into my heels and not my toes. That increases the buoyancy resistance and limits the pitch of the deck. More than that though, it engages one primary set of muscles that you're using to keep your equilibrium steady. And that's your lower back and your hamstrings. And that's all because your toes are higher than your heels. You can experiment with that yourself. When your toes are higher than your heels, it's your lower back. Now, when you're flat-footed on a watercraft with a large flat surface, you're using both your front core muscles and your lower back muscles to stabilize yourself. When the boat is limiting yourself to just one set, in this case, your lower back, it makes it a lot easier to handle. Even if one foot is just a little bit lifted up right here, that's really all you need to engage your lower back muscles. And for fishing, it's also really important. Just to be on that little bit of a lip, when I set that hook with my toes higher than my heels, it enables me to put more outward pressure against that fish and line the whole weight and force of the boat up, not just the top of my body. And whether you're sitting in a low seat with a back on it or a high casting stool like this, this angled surface is perfect because it's always giving your feet somewhere to touch and feel. And it's perfect when you want to put that pressure on a fish and control it. This surface right here is ergonomic and it's the same thing. When I lean forward, my weight's going to my heels, even in a chair and not my toes. It's comfortable to kneel down on and grab a fish really quick. And that little uh, gradient there on the edge there gives your toes a little something to grip onto when you're getting back in your chair. You're getting into the boat, my toes are pointing down like this. I'm stepping out of the boat, my heels are pointing down. So it's like a suction, it's like a funnel for your center of gravity, always keeping it as close to the center as it possibly can. Anyway, I hope this uh, cleared a couple things up and taught you a little something about the design. Till next time, everyone, tight lines.